What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Please subscribe. Please like. Please do all the things that uh, can help us spread the word for the show. I appreciate it. I'm on tour right now at this very current moment. I'm in Philly uh, this weekend. Next weekend, I'm going to be in Chicago, Chicago with my people. Uh, and then I go to Connecticut to Mohegan Sun. And then I'm in Cincinnati and in Cleveland. Then I do Houston Skank Fest for one night. A couple of shows I'm going to be bouncing around. Um, then in April, of course, I'm going to Seattle. I'm going to Portland. We're trying to add a few dates because University of Montana wouldn't let me perform because they suck. So I'm also doing Sacramento. We just added April 9th. Um, and then I'm doing Miami Improv, West Palm. And then I go to Spokane Comedy Club back up in Washington. You want to see all these dates, go to andrewsantino.com. Uh, that's also where you can get merch like this red rocket hat amongst a slew of other beautiful, incredible, amazing things, as well as our Patreon, which will let me do one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, live Q&A. Patreon's getting you a little bit closer and connected to the show, behind the show, behind the show. But for all that good stuff, go to andrewsantino.com. That's where you can get tickets. Don't buy tickets from erroneous third-party websites. They're bullshit. Make sure you buy them through our site so they're secure, so you know you're not getting ripped off. Uh, enough from me. Enjoy the episode. In here... We pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is, uh, look at I fucked up the beginning already. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is Mr. Doug Benson. Doug. Hey. Cheers to Doug. Oh, yeah. You have to look me in the eyes. Even I, though I love can't see your this. Eyes, there. Bam, there we yeah, go. Yeah, what's your policy on sunglasses You have to look me in the eyes on when this you, show. Oh, you can put, no, wear the sunglasses. I'll take them off to do this, Yeah, just though. for the cheers. Yeah. There we go. Ready? And then you just go straight to mouth. You don't do that tapping it on the table thing. That's bullshit. That's like a not a. That's that's like a new age thing. The 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 Irish uh, tap and drink. You look and drink. You're supposed to look each other in the eyes for good luck mm -hmm. to make sure you're not evil yeah. and you're not poisoning me. And then you drink. This whole table tap thing. I don't I don't know where that started or who who begun that. Feels like you're doing a shot when you do that. That is kind of a shot thing. But also, yeah. I don't know a lot of. It's just a loud, stupid person thing. Stupid person thing. It's yeah. just like I'm gonna get drunk, so every you know. Yeah, everyone needs People to have know. to notice me getting drunk. How can I get their attention? I'll smash this tiny glass against the bar, <laughs> risk cutting my hand open. <laughs> what great attention I would get going to the getting into an ambulance drunk. Yeah, drunk. Yeah, and bleeding profusely Ugh. because of the booze coursing through your veins. You know how funny that is to think that it's just a tiny glass. You're so right. It's just a little baby. They could put a shot in a regular glass, but to make you feel like you're doing more, they put it in a little baby glass, a little person glass. Booze is the only reason anybody's doing anything stupid in public anymore. Ninety nine percent of the time, yeah. because everyone that's sober is isn't going to act stupidly because they know they're going to be filmed. Yeah, yeah, from every angle. Yeah, you're filmed all the you time. You can't now. get away with nonsense anymore. Yeah, it's true. You, unless you're, you know, and you're drunk, you forget. Yeah, that the nonsense police are constantly <laughs> <The> nonsense. <police. laughs> they're afoot. <laughs> The nonsense police are out today, by the oh way, they're, and they're running around rampant. Do you feel like you're always being filmed? Do you feel like it's a thing that's happening all too much now? Well, I've done that too many times now. I've been like, I've made like three documentaries where I was followed around for a period of time with I've cameras. Watched, I've seen, yeah. And I did uh, Last Comic Standing. So I've been through that ringer of yeah. being on camera all the time. So that, at least I'm sort of used to that. But it still really bums me out. Like if I'm just talking to fans after a show and somebody takes out a camera and just Ugh. starts filming it. Or yeah, or same with when you're doing your act and you're in a club where they don't police very much and someone's just sitting there filming it. Uh, you know, at least you know, at least go through the motions. Like uh, pretend. hide hide it. Yeah. yeah, just pretend that you're not doing don't, it. Because as soon as I know that you're doing it, and it's like, especially out in public. It's really not, there's nothing I can say to a person to get them to stop. Right. Other than just hoping they will when you say stop. But now they've got a video of you asking them to stop. Right. And that person always looks like a dick. Yeah. Oh, like inherently. You know what I mean? Like, please stop Take every me. famous person you've seen tell, admonishing somebody. Yeah. <laughs> they always look like That's an why that show, uh, TM, the TMZ. prank show. Oh. Uh, what was that? You know, Dax Shepard's prank show. Punked. <laughs> I call it his show now. Yeah, Dax Shepard's punk. Yeah. 
It was he's, his. He's who I think of more. Uh, but anyway, yeah, punked. Like, just counted on the fact that even perfectly nice celebrities are going to fucking let people have it. Well, because nobody wants to be recorded. That's a weird... It's Unless I agree to be recorded in terms of like if I'm shooting a television show, outside of that, in the real world, it's uncomfortable. Also, it's weird when somebody... I was out to dinner. I was out to dinner the, uh, the other night. And as I'm leaving the restaurant, a man, and I mean yells, like across the room, just goes, Andrew! <laughs> what would you... What does he think I'm going to do? Stop, turn uh, to the whole restaurant... Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, I know on the way out, he's going, fucking asshole. Like, because I didn't turn and say anything, I saw it on my peripheral and just kept walking because what did you think I was going to do when you yelled my name? But like, I'm the bad guy for some reason. It, it, there, like, it, there are a lot of times fans or people will put you in a situation where you're like, oh, dude, you didn't have to, you didn't have to do that. That, that if you just came up to me and were mm -hmm. like, hey, I would have been cool. It just, that puts me in a weird I look like an asshole, no matter if I do or I don't acknowledge you. People like, don't know what to do. They yeah. just, they're just, are, you know, people are getting more and more socially awkward because they get to do whatever they want on the internet. Yeah. But then face to face, they're even more strangely shyer than I think they used to be. Totally. Like people never talk shit to my face and I get it. I could turn on my phone and get it immediately from, right. from people from on the internet. People. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so it's, it's just, uh, it's a whole weird, uh, you know, game. This uh... well, it's, we're more disconnected than we ever were to to actually like learning about people because they don't you don't need to anymore. You can I can just absorb your bio on the internet or whatever I can find about you, and then that becomes their perception of you, regardless of how much of that information is true or hyperbolized. It just that's exactly who you become. It's kind of like how uh, the the previous generation. Um, I remember my uncle one time said to me, uh, uh, everybody loves Raymond. That guy, you know that guy? <laughs> and I go, yeah, are you Ray Romano? He goes, yeah. He goes, I bet you he's a really good dude. And I go, how would you know? How would you? You just don't. You don't know. Like, I'm. Sh he might be, but it's weird that like television and film puts people in a place mentally where they go, bet you that guy's a good dude. Might be a piece of shit. I don't know. Right? But then sometimes yeah. if you play a negative character on TV, they go, that guy's an asshole. And you're like, no, that's that's just this thing he does. He plays yeah. this thing. No, you get treated like the character you play. Always. <laughs> Always. So it's it's tricky. It's fun. Well, it's fun. <laughs> well, like for you, like, look, for you, you being an avid, uh, there should be a better word for avid, pot smoker, marijuana indulger. Yeah. Do people Openly. only exclusively <laughs> come up to you and always want to smoke pot with you? Is it so constant that they're like, after every show, like, I have to smoke pot with you. I'm trying to smoke. Do you get do you get over it at some point that you're like, I don't really want to smoke pot with you? It's happening less and less to me as time goes on. But for a while, it was pretty constant. constant. Like, yeah. and in some cities, just walking down the street, I get people, you know, coming up and saying, we, you know, we have to smoke. And, you know, and most of the time, the, the, it's in places where I feel pretty comfortable, you know. Mm-hmm. Even before this wave of legalization, like any time I was in like Eugene, Oregon, I was like, I, you could just smoke crack on the streets there, and you know nobody cares, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's getting a, a little bit less now because like I'm getting my, my I'm getting more of a, a niche kind of fan base just from you know from mostly podcasting, yeah, and. Uh, so like a lot of the Doug Loves Movies listeners just are just into that and movies that the weed part, the weed aspect of it isn't that important to them, huh. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like, so I just got a tweet today from somebody saying, hey, you know, I hope you don't mind me coming to your show and not being high. I don't do, I don't do that. I'm like, hey, hey, if it's still going to be fun for you right, right. to sit amongst a bunch of people that are probably high, yeah. then yes, come to my show. I love that know? asking for permission to not be high at your show. Doug, yeah. do you mind that I don't smoke pot? Is that going to be all right? And like, also, like, there's a chance I'd write back, yeah, just don't come. Don't come. Don't come to my <laughs> show. Get the fuck out. Raise your hand we if you're not high. don't want your money. You? Get we the fuck out. Your, uh, we don't want your attention span, because I, I count on the audience not being able to uh, <laughs> focus for terribly long. <laughs>
<laughs> that's part of the show. That's part of it. how the act is written. I can't tell long stories because of <laughs> I, the people in the audience are probably as high as I am. Yeah, because you want to get through. Well, you also don't want to. You want to keep people's attention span, even if they weren't high. That's what's hard about doing podcasts live. I commend you for that because it's 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 the the, the rhythm of a podcast is tough to do live uh, if you don't have a lot going on because they're used to sitting in a room and seeing a stand up show where it's like joke, 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 joke. Podcast can be devoid of that, especially, especially live. Like you well, stand up's keep- like a sermon, like it's a performance aspect to it that you can't, you can't really necessarily do in, in a podcast where it's totally. you know, people sitting around talking. But I also feel like the audience, as funny as podcasts are that don't have an audience, which, you know, most of them don't. And they're also, it can be hilarious. Yeah. I just feel like, it just brings the comedy out of everything to have the the audience there. Yeah, it's super fun. No, it, it there it's it's wildly fun. It's just remarkably different from what you're doing when you're sitting in the room like this. It's just so it's a, it should be called something else because it's not really a podcast. It's more it's more just like a live reading that we're just getting to record, like a, li- <laughs> a live show that we just get the privilege of just taking. You know, like I'm doing another one. I'm gonna go up to uh, you know in uh, uh, JFL. I record at those. And it's so fun because it's it's so interactive, and I and I and I'd never experienced that before, doing like a live podcast because the fans that come out for festival, it's just a different vibe. They're so fucking amped to be a part of it because f- the festival energy is, I mean, you know, we've done a million festivals together. It's just like the energy is different at those shows. I I fucking love them, man. Yeah, people that are like, I really like comedy. I really want to go watch a lot of it. Yeah. And I want to see, you know, people that I've been, you know, listening to, like they're, they're, they listen to us so much that then, you know, getting to see it in person. Like also from Doug Lowe's movies, I'll have like people that are on the show all the time and then I'll get to watch them meet fans who did not, did not picture them. A certain, you know, they. Right. I thought you were taller. I thought you'd be this. I That's thought a you'd weird. Be com- that. What, what do you get the most? You know, what do they say to you? They, I get. I, I didn't know you'd be this tall. Like they, I, I come off smaller me. on camera somehow. People say they, they go. I didn't know you were tall. I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm six one. How tall are you? I'm five eleven. Yeah, people always say to me, they go, I didn't know you were tall. I was like, well, what? What did you? Th- I guess I don't know what you. Th- I, yeah, you see me in a little box. Yeah, I think you know. I don't know how it happened, but a few of my bestest friends in comedy whom are they were, are giants, like yeah. t- really tall, like Posehn. So like like Brian Posehn, like huge, I, like yeah. I'm sort of associated with him a great deal, especially mm-hmm. early on in our careers. And uh, when we stand next to each other, he just tower over me. How tall is he? So then six, people probably five? thought you know he was like you know six one and I was five seven. Or right, 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 right. But it's instead of that, he's just a fucking he's a giant. fucking mammoth, he's like dude. six four. I think. Yeah, he's a big he's a big boy. Yeah. Every time I see him, I always forget. Uh, every time I see him, I think uh, my first thought is he's very funny. I like him, and then I think, God, he could fucking just kill something. He's such like a big, big dude. Oh yeah, he he. Brian was <laughs> on a course to be a comedian or a serial killer. <laughs> right, right. Like those right. were his options. <laughs> he might still if <laughs> listen, dude. He might be on the side. A good serial killer hides it beneath another career, so he could just be a, a comic serial killer that we don't know about. You know? Has he done this show? No, but I want him to do the show. Well, he's him. got he's promoting the hell out of something right now. I mean, he always is. He's always Link, got something. He's always but, got something going on. But he's got a, you know, he's finally made like a whole album of metal music with Scott Ian and a bunch of his other yeah, he's such heroes. A, he's a, are you a metal dude or no? Not really. I What's mean, your I, genre? I, I mostly appreciate metal through Brian. Like right. I, I, I enjoy how much he enjoys it. Like when we used to spend a lot of time together, we'd like – Half the time we'd listen to just kind of basic pop music, which is sort of my deal, and and the other half of the time we'd listen to really fucking hardcore metal. Heavy metal. metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in the heaviest possible. What's in what's in your <laughs> what's in your playlist right now? What do you what are you listening to right now? Uh, I'm you know I'm like a weird mix of like I really do like pop music. I like Taylor Swift a lot. Yeah, and I like uh, I like Broadway music and whoa, yeah, that's a that's such a fucking massive leap. <laughs> Broadway and Taylor Swift's two sides of a Grand Canyon. That's such a big difference. Well, it's all very poppy these days, though. Sure. I mean, it's all just catchy music that uh, yeah. you know is often set to a dramatic situation of some <laughs> sort. Um, you love boy, but, you love boy trouble stories. But I love, I, I love seeing shows on Broadway, whether it's just regular plays or uh, musicals. 
and I, I try to see as much of that stuff as I can. That's like my biggest when I'm on some show where they ask you that question. What do people not know about you? Or what would people <laughs> be surprised to know yeah. about you? I, mean, oh, I like to get fucking ripped and go and watch Beetlejuice the musical on Broadway. <laughs> I've seen it three times. Really? Yeah. Plus, I've also become friends with a guy who plays Beetlejuice. I'm becoming like the more I hang around Broadway and see Broadway shows and do my podcasts in New York, I'm becoming friends with more and more people that are sure. actually in Broadway shows, which is super exciting to me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it is cool. It is fucking cool. Yeah. Do you play poker at all? No. Should I play poker? No, no. You're fine. But <laughs> it's probably not a good thing to get into at this point. I'm but, not good at it. But I was super into, uh, you know, Texas Hold'em for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'd play in, like, tournaments around uh, Are you good? L.A. and stuff. No, but, it, you know, anybody can get lucky and do okay. You mm. know, I've I've won a couple of tournaments. But, oh, shit. Yeah, one time in Atlantic City when I was, I was uh, you know – performing there at night or not yeah atlantic city i was performing there at night but during the daytime i entered a tournament in their poker room it's like a couple hundred players and and uh, it got narrowed down to me i was the winner and Fuck. so like i way, made way more money doing that than, than the comedy than the show that <laughs> night than the opening for ben bailey but uh how much can you make in a <laughs> poker tournament for real like that like an en like a, a, a street entry no professionals everyone's an amateur it depends because they have you know kind of the entry fees vary pretty wildly like what some will that? be really cheap and some will be I probably paid like 120 bucks okay to play and then probably won like seven or eight grand what yeah how long does that take you that's like a five and it takes thing, four right? five six hours <laughs> right, right. yeah <laughs> one time I was doing really well in a tournament and I just had to tell my friend was also on the bill I just had to say could you just please go explain to the headliner of the show tonight that the feature act might not be might not make it because <laughs> I didn't want to walk away from a tournament I was like in the final table of a tournament and uh, I knew there was a chance that it would run long enough that I wouldn't be able to make it to my set. Sure. And so uh, my friend got it all uh, squared away and uh, you missed the spot. Uh, no I ended up getting knocked out uh, early enough to make my spot but it was you know it was close, and I, but at least I had the I had the comfort of knowing that you know I if could I could be. play the rest of this tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I didn't have that extra pressure of like you know not only do I have to win, I have to win fast. <laughs> I have to knock you this know, out, and then I have we'll to comedy. yeah. Because then you I, that's probably what happened is I probably just made some dumb moves just to try to get it over with. And do you still win anything anyway when you get knocked out if you place or no? If you're at the final table, you've probably won some money. And I, how many I, people sit at the final table? Uh, again, it depends on the mm. structure of the tournament. My ignorance how is staggering. many players, but it could be anywhere from like nine to twelve. Mine too. Like people are probably watching this that are more into poker than I am now, because I've I've had years now of not being that into it. I was more into it when I was, uh, you know, couldn't afford it, right? You know, right. and was actually playing to like, you know, okay, let's <laughs> let's see if we can make rent. You yeah. know, I go down to commerce all the time, but. The reason I brought this up in the first place, and I'm shocked that I can even remember Me too. at this point, is because uh, I watched a lot of poker on TV, uh, uh, you know, because ESPN got really super into showing it. And then there was this other travel channel has World Poker Tour and uh, all these poker shows I'd get really into, uh, uh, late night poker shows on NBC. Yeah. So uh, I got good enough – to, you know, or I should say successful enough to afford to enter tournaments where you just get to play with professional players. Oh, that's awesome. So, so I've played with, which like there's no other sport or even chess or anything. There's nothing other than uh, poker where you could just sit down a complete amateur and right. get to play across the table from the best in, in the world. Yeah, the, well, the only thing I can think of. And be competitive. You could yeah. still maybe win the hand. Right. Bowling, bowling, too, is the well, other one golf. where anyone can bowl a, a, a strike. Golf, you can do. Uh, there's a pro-am. <laughs> there's a pro-am Oh, golf. yeah, where you can get in and play with them. Yeah. But you're not going to beat them. No fucking way. But I could beat. I've beaten professional poker players really? in a hand of poker. Who did you beat? I can't remember which ones. <laughs> That's even better. You're a pro, I, can, you I only nothing. can remember the ones where I got devastatingly beat up by them. Like there's Phil. this one guy named Jesus Ferguson because okay. he looks like Jesus. Yeah, and he wears a cowboy hat and has the Jesus hair. As, as Jesus did. Sitting cowboy across hat. from him, I was just fucking. I just couldn't. Didn't know what to do. I couldn't. Like he just really was has he intimidating. That. Yeah, it's just chilling. Like how you're like, oh, if I go up against this guy, I'm going to lose. But you can't 
just choose to not go up against somebody at the table. Right. You know, so. Uh, I'm impressed by that. Things by the happen. Way. The vibe that people throw off. and Because I've never experienced that, but I hear that from friends that they say at a poker table, um, people's people have tricks that they use to intimidate or to throw off other players. And I'm so ignorant to it. The times I have played, it's meant nothing to me what other people are doing because I'm so fucking uh, dumb about what I'm supposed to do. Right. That I wouldn't even I don't even have time to think about what they're trying to sucker yeah. me into doing. So so inevitably, sometimes I'll win on accident because oh, yeah, that's what happens. I have no idea that they're <laughs> they're trying to fuck with me. That I'm like I don't know. I'm just trying to do the the best I can at this thing. Good players get mad as hell at new players or drunk players. Drunk players in casinos sure. yeah. who uh, just win hands because they just they stick around longer than they should have. Right, and they just get you know as they say they get the card they're looking for on the river. You know That's the, the last, last card, card will right. give them what they what they were looking for, and uh, so people are always like oh, I just got rivered. You know they're always. Yeah, it's such, such an angry lot of people. Like, there's some that are very chill, some poker players that are chill, which is what I like to be. I like to just go and be high and just yeah, and just it's play because it's perfect game to be because it's just at. exciting to wait for the card. You know, when they flip all those first three cards, it's uh, it's always exciting every time. Yeah, <laughs> so I love it. But I did find that once I started making more money in show business uh, and could pay my bills, then I was less interested in gambling. Oh really? Oh, yeah. right. Because the risk is is the risk is part of the excitement, right? And and, no and risk, also a reward for you know, like w when you do get lucky and win a lot of money off of uh, you know starting out small. Like I'll I'll crack up now because I'll sit down and put twenty dollars into like a penny slot machine. And I was in Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and I managed to work that up in an hour or two. I worked that up to like uh, seven hundred bucks. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's like, but that's like I think about how I used to be like I would be like so crazy totally. excited if that totally. happened, and probably turn around and lose it all right away. Right. And now I'm just like, oh, that was fun. Cool. That I won that, that money and now I'll keep it. Right. <laughs> I'll go spend it on a nice meal. I'll go eat dinner now. Yeah, exactly. I'll go that's, to fucking it, That's true to me. Uh, honestly, this is I've said that very recently to somebody. I used to play, blackjack was the only thing I liked. Blackjack and craps I, I, when I would go to casinos. Mm -hmm. And I used to love blackjack. I would get out of a show. I would have a couple of drinks and I would smoke a joint. And then they either go play with someone if they if if they were down, or I'd just go by myself and sit quietly and yeah, kind of just. You don't hang need out. anybody. No, but it's, it's fun to have a buddy. Yeah. Works either way. And I would just sit high playing blackjack for uh, you know an hour or two at the most. But honestly, I used to get so much more excited about the wins. But uh, it's unfortunate that like when you are making a little bit more money, and I'm not saying I'm richy rich, but like. The the small hands that I would win or the small amounts that I would win, I don't bet an insane amount. I'm not a guy who's like 10 grand hands. So when you do win, it is weird that I'm kind of like, eh. So lately, I when I do go to casinos, I don't play anymore. And it's funny because I used to love sitting at a blackjack table with friends or craps with friends. But now I would have to bet a lot of money for it to be scary and I don't and I definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. It's I just don't want to do it. I know guys that'll do it yeah. like that. I know guys that'll sit down and throw insane money. I was living in Vegas uh shooting this fucking show for Yahoo. We lived in Caesar's Palace for 2 months straight. So we got used to it so you never played cuz you just were there every day. Mm -hmm. But um a few people that we were with, they were degenerate. I mean they were gambling addicts. Like they <laughs> couldn't fucking step away from it. The moment we wrapped, it was like table and uh we were leaving, um, like not a nightclub, but like a di like a, d a dinner inside of a club at a at a casino, and um, we had had like per diems built up for all these push calls because they were illegally pushing us and giving us cash. You know, they didn't want the union to know. Sure. So these guys had pockets of cash, and he went up to um, a roulette table, which I've told so many people is a sucker. It's a sucker game. It's a stupid game. The only way to bet on roulette, the closest you should do is red or black because it's the best odds you can get pushing your money around at a roulette table for hours is it's a silly game but like I, he put it on black he put all of it on black and it was maybe a grand and a half maybe mm -hmm. something like that and he and he lost and then he was like oh fuck it and i'm thinking we're walking away he's going right to the atm to go get more money out to you know to keep playing wow we leave we come back sure enough he's like oh i'm like six and a half in the hole I was like, oh my God, you're like $600 in the hole? What do you mean six more? And he's like, no, no, I'm like six and a half grand down from 
what I just lost earlier. So he's almost 10 grand just out. And it was a matter of, I don't know, an hour maybe that he just <laughs> had pushed it out. That's why I'm like, I can't, I can't do, I can't be the guy that's, <laughs> I can't make that call. You know, that's like uh fucking, Hey, I just lost six and a half grand on what roulette. Why? Ugh. I, I love roulette, but I love roulette because I pick, you know, I walk up with a certain amount of money that I'm willing to lose. Yeah. And then I pick the same numbers on every spin. Smart. That's the only way to win. Yeah. And I just stick with those numbers. And when they hit, I have a great time at the roulette table. Right. I walk away up. And when they don't hit, I lost that amount. Right. Probably You're like done. hundred bucks. And I go, okay, I'm you done. You never go to the ATM. I, you know, I might, you know, maybe, but probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Just also because it's time consuming. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, especially blackjack, if you're playing like five or even $15 blackjack, you know, on a hundred bucks, you could sit there for, you know, six, seven hours and be looked down and you've got 120 in front of you or 80. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? It takes forever to right. get any, you know, Movement. I mean, it, you could lose it fast, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it takes forever to get, if you double down a lot and hit them, hit them wrong, you know, you could lose fast. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I love I love uh, everything but craps. I just never got never into craps. craps. Oh, I don't mind. Friends, I don't mind watching best. it, but I just don't. I I don't like the fact that there's uh, just all this yelling going on all the time, <laughs> and it yeah. seems very similar to me in 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 uh, to roulette in that all of the side bets just seem like just whack a doodle. Like I'm just taking a chance that this is going to happen. That's true. Bets, yeah. and I don't want to do those like on the fly. You know, I want a yeah. second to think about something like that. The name of crap should be renamed Wackadoodle. I really think that's very funny. <laughs> wackadoodle Rollies. Step right up for Wackadoodle. I mean, that's definitely what that stick is sure, called. Sure, throw the, the Wackadoodle. stick is the Wackadoodle. And the Wackadoodle Scooper. <laughs> and Wackadoodle to you, sir. So wackadoodle to you. <laughs> that's what it should be. Dude, I wanted to tell you this. This is what, when uh, when we linked about, about doing this. The first thing I thought of was I wanted to tell you the story. When I did your show, when I did uh, Getting Dug With High, mm -hmm. was the worst moment of my life because I had done that thing that I know I shouldn't have done, which was not get high before I showed up. Right. And so when we did get high, I got way too high too fast mm -hmm. because my I was, I was like adrenaline rush, excited to do the show. Sure. And I my brain stopped working halfway through the show because the lights of the show, the it was like my brain, the functionality typically when I'm stoned is, is, is I, I need to kind of slowly get into it. And I got so high so fast. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I could, I was telling a story to you. I can see the first moment that I started to like go deep into my high space. Cause I was telling you a story about the first time I got caught smoking pot or was doing, or, or, or was smoking pot that I got caught at my friend's house uh, we were blowing hits out of the vent in the bathroom, thinking that that was going to be a clever way to get away with it. But it was blowing it through the home like mm -hmm. idiots. Yeah. And I was telling the story. And as I was telling the story to you, I'm looking at you, realizing that I'm forgetting my place in the story. And at some point, I think I bail on the story. And I was like, yeah, that's what happened. And you're like, that's what happened? That's it? <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't fucking do it. I got so fuck. I got too high. And who was it? Jacob Seraf and, uh, and I think it was Jade was on the show with me, but I was like, oh man, I want to go back and redeem myself. But I could, but I was like, there was three guests. I think it was me, Jacob and Jade. Yeah. I'm almost positive. You've only been on the one time. One time. Yeah. Because after that I was like, I, well, I've done, I've done the Doug loves movies, but not, sure, sure. but not, yeah. Getting, getting Doug with high because I realized after that moment, I didn't want to get high on a live recorded thing anymore because I would, it just fucked me up mentally. I was like, oh, I can't, I was too baked. I got too baked and I couldn't speak, which I imagine happens on the show. People get too baked. Oh yeah. Including me. Like, yeah. especially now that we've introduced dabs into the equation. I don't we, know how. We okay. like do tons of dabs. You so like, just you like, like dabs? I do. I like, I like how it's, it, 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 for people when they come on and they haven't done it, I don't, I don't like try to push them into it, but if I'm yeah. describing what it's going to be like for them, right? it's just like taking like a uh, kind of too big of a bong hit. I would say, it's, you know, it's, yeah, too big is correct. It's way too big. It's just, a, it's, it's an exaggerated, exaggerated bong hit and it condenses the amount of high I am so quickly. <laughs> I can't do it. Dude. It's an instant high and it's, um, you know, it can be pretty rough on uh, the, the throat and, uh, you know, could make you cough a lot, but, um, you know, I'm getting more and more used to it, but I just, I do like, 
I, I already like bongs the best as far as, you know. So you like bongs more than more than joints, more than pipes, more yeah, than anything, huh? Because joints don't, you know, they're just they're nice and they're social, but yeah. but they don't uh they don't get me, you know, Ripped. terribly high. You right. Know? Like, yeah, that's true. Like like you know, and most of the time when I'm smoking a joint, it's because I'm outside and I'm supposed to be inside for something. So you you want to get high quickly. Yeah. And you're outside smoking a joint and it, you know, it just doesn't necessarily uh, do it, but you know, of course, there's lots of exceptions. It's, people are sprinkling more. You know, they'll just sprinkle some some uh, hash on there. S- yeah, or some key for something, yeah. and you know, or you could be smoking moon rocks or whatever. It's getting all crazier and crazier, and that's where that's where dabs come in. I think is just that it's it's fun to do something that. Like people are kind of over seeing me smoke weed, you know. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of become such a done, thing. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, now let's see this fucker, you know, cough his ass off doing dabs. <laughs> What's the next level? <laughs> yeah, dude. Let me let him. What's the next level without? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. for years people say well, do a sequel to Super High Me, and I'm like, what? You know, I don't want to. There's no other drug I'd want to do it with. I wouldn't want to double the length of everything. I mean, it's almost you know? too much. Like it's yeah, we had way too much footage just from thirty days of from super high off and on. Yeah. yeah. What about what about? Are you somebody that dabbles in mushrooms or no? You don't like psychedelics? I've done it, but I don't. Uh, it's not my thing. That's interesting. I've because I real I, I've been smoking pot for twenty years. I would say. Um, and I like to say on and off because I took, I would take a couple months from not smoking pot and then I would go months where I would smoke every day. And then I would take, like, I've always done that. I think this, the only thing that's been consistent in my life is drinking. I've always been a big drinker, but, um, I was introduced to mushrooms in high school. I did them a, a shitload, then in college a little bit, then post-college, you know, here and there. And then recently I found them again and fuck, man, I, I couldn't recommend them more. <laughs> I love them. I mean, honestly, because especially nowadays, getting mushrooms back in the day was always like <clears throat> much more hard to acquire, much more difficult to like get good mushrooms. You know, you could get some that were kind of weak and they weren't that good and they were hard, harder to find. And then now they're so uh, they're so easy to get and they're also so easy to get in different ways now where there's chocolates, there's people that make chocolates now and those you pop one in and you really won't trip. Most mushroom things I've eaten taste... Horrible. Well, like yeah, because you ate, you ate physical awful. mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. And Nowadays, you're, you're always, it's they're always figuring out ways to like, you know, stuff it into something. Chocolate's so the best. If you like chocolate, there's a guy, there's literally like a, a group in Venice that makes chocolate bars, mushroom chocolate bars. And I highly recommend it. They're, they're, they're potent enough where you do get the physical f- effects of, of mushrooms, but a pretty lack of psychedelics. You won't see a lot. You won't visualize a lot, but the body high, the mental... Uh, the mental shift that you get is similar to, I feel like when I get super fucking big, like when I did a dab, Mm -hmm. I felt like the same way I felt on mushrooms, body and mental, but not, not, not a lot of visual changes. So to me, like what they're doing now is similar to how I felt when I get super high, except the difference is uh, if I get super high on a dab, when I do that, I get a, I still get a little paranoia sets in a little bit. Like, do you get a little bit or no? Um, uh, you know, I guess yeah. it's, it's situational. It's so high, know? so fast. That's why it's like a <laughs> fucking, like, yeah. it's a rush for me. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I guess there may be some things I wouldn't want to do a dab uh, directly before. But what is it? I, I'm having trouble thinking of any. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite I really thing will to do, do it everywhere now. What's your favorite you know? thing to do after a dab? Uh, probably food, probably go food. Have what about shower? Eat. Some people like showering a lot. That's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a huge, uh, bath and jacuzzi fan. Love baths, dude. Fuck yeah. me. Getting high so, and taking a bath is oh, yeah. tip top. It's so good. And there's just so rarely a situation where you can really just sit there and, you know, actually smoke in the tub, you know? Yeah. So when those come along, that's pretty exciting. Do you, do you tub on tour? <laughs> Do you tub on the road? I try to. I know comics that say no way. I tub in every single hotel that I go to. Uh, you know, I try my best, but it's you know you gotta. It, that takes some effort to get a, a a good tub or just a regular. You'll do it in a regular tub. In a no, not in a, no, no, no. You no, make no. sure the room has like a extra Correct. large tub. Yeah, uh, not in the shower tub. Not in those. Yeah, in the separate. I make sure. Like I'll go out of my way to spend a little bit more money on a nice hotel just so I can have a tub that I want to sit in. You know, the best is they're, they're, they seem to be getting rarer and rarer as I stumble onto a 
uh, jacuzzi tub that's in the same room as know, the I bed and the TV. Shit. They don't do that anymore. I love it's those. It's still some places. Yeah. Yeah. And I, whenever I find those, I'm very excited. So Me too. we should start a thing where we just text each other uh, different what hotel hotels tubs. have the. <laughs> Do you have, like, I also have two or three chains that I stick to just to get my points up. Of course. And so that's another way to get those rooms. Of course, yeah, yeah. So you can get, up, I get upgraded because know. I've been doing them for so long. I checked into a hotel the other day, and I specifically, you know, when I went on the site, found a room that has a big, huge sunken tub with jets and everything, and uh, uh, picked one of those rooms. And I get there and go into the room, and it's just like a stand-up shower, no bath at all. Mm. And Shame. I and I call down at the front desk, and I go, I think I ordered a room with a bath in it. And they're like, oh, this room's the same room type, but some have baths and some don't. And I'm like, well, can I have one that has a bath? And May they I go, have the they one go, I wanted? They go, okay. <laughs> and I just they move me like next door, the next door room. And that had a bath. They moved me from 420 to 421. Do you always do 420? No, that was just a funny coincidence where uh, no no winks or nods from the people handing me the key when they go, you're right. in room 420. You like, wanted They had to. no idea. You were like, huh? They were like, no, no, I don't no, know. No, every once in a while, some smart aleck will, you know, behind the desk will give me room 420 because they figure out who I am. Right. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, that was a coincidence to shift you to a room to 421. Mm -hmm. And then so then in room 421, the most amazing you can get it up to like 111 degrees. Well, that's hot. Too hot. Yeah. It starts telling you it's too hot when you get it up there. Uh, <laughs> it but, says too hot. But you got you to gotta test the limits on these things. <laughs> and it, yeah, it starts going too yeah. hot, too hot. Um, uh, and then, but it's also got uh, lights that change Ooh, color. Oh, how dope. And, you know, but super strong jets, which I like, because I like the, the muscle therapy Me of it. Me too. And... Um, even though I'm not really doing anything that physical other than lugging bags through airports. It's good to, it's good to massage still, your muscles, when man. You can, like low, when you can like lay back into it enough to hit like the top of your shoulders right up here, yeah. with the fucking really hard, yeah. hot jet. It's so good. I want to so lose myself. So anyway, up. TV in the, in the tub, Perfect. but also doors that open next to the tub so you can see the main TV oh, in, shit. in the bedroom. Two different shows, dude. And... <laughs> Yeah. With two different shows on. Picture in picture. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was so sweet. And I, I was just like, I just wanted to say that people work there. Did, so you really just every day will just put people in a room that doesn't have that tub when that tub is available? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. For the same price? Yeah, that's insane. And they're like, yeah, you man, that's assholes. what we do. <laughs> what is this? Can you tell the city? What city is this? It was right here. It was right in Los, Los Angeles. It was a fun weekend for me and my girlfriend because uh, we got to go to the Spirit Awards. Oh, very cool. Uh, down on the beach in Santa Monica. So I also thought, let's stay in Santa Monica. Yeah, why not? Dude? And, uh, you know, it was expensive, but it was fun. Isn't Sometimes isn't it nice to just fucking do it and not give a shit and just go, whatever, dude, I'll fucking. Yeah, I like, still give a shit. Like, that's the w weird thing about uh, my some having you know a little bit of financial success is that I still spend money like I don't have it, like you, I still yeah. I still seek you know if there's a cheaper option I I almost always get it and you do yeah why 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 if fear, uh, fear of losing it or something not needing it like right like sometimes like when they're go like at a hotel they're like would you like the free upgrade to a you know a suite with two rooms yeah I'm like um. I just I like a regular size hotel room because sure. I just put my shit everywhere. I know where it is. I don't have to walk from room to room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 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 oh, there's a gig in Sacramento, the Punchline, where the hotel they think they're giving you an upgrade when they give you a room that's got a loft. So every time you want to go to the bed or the bathroom, it's go upstairs. upstairs. <laughs> But the living room and the kitchen are down, and the front door are downstairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, and I'm, I'm not lazy in that way. Like, if it was really, you know, if there was something extra cool about it, like if you went up those stairs and the upstairs had its own private balcony, very cool. That you could, because that is another one you look for is yeah. balconies. Balconies love have to have. Them yeah, too. we got to set up a thing <laughs> we where do. we <laughs> say <laughs> this has got a balcony and yeah. a tub. 
Because when, it, when it's both, that's Clutch. all I'm looking for. Yep. It, we should do an Excel spreadsheet that we'll share, a Google Doc <laughs> we'll share about balconies and hot tubs. In Whiskey here, Ginger fans, I want you to take a second out of your day and look down at uh, at your basement. I want you to check out and see how hairy and dirty and disgusting you are. If you got too much fluff, that's bad stuff, okay? You need to get yourself Manscaped products, specifically the new Perfect Package 3.0, okay? It is phenomenal. Targeting dudes right now. Ladies, I'm sorry, but this is for men. It's the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. Uh, they are incredible. They have a brand new package, a kit designed just for you to clean up your basement, your Netherlands, your Nender region, your Nifkin, your Gooch, your Grundle, whatever you want to call it. That lawnmower 3.0 is waterproof, cordless body trimmer. Use it in the shower. Make sure you don't nick your nuts. It's got a wonderful light on it so you can make sure you're seeing the crevices in which you're getting in there. And for most of you guys, average penile men, you really got to get in there nice and tight. You don't got a big beef stick to worry about. You got a little smoky. So get yourself uh, some Manscaped prop, uh, pro, 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 products. Products? Products? Yeah, products. Get some Manscaped products. Uh, it's phenomenal. The Crop Preserver, Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Moisturizer. I've used all this stuff, but I, I brag mostly about using uh, the Lawnmower 3.0 because I really do like it. It keeps my nuts nick-free, my friend. For a limited time, subscribers get not one but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, it's a $40 value, and the Patent High Performance uh, Anti-Chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs because uh, nobody wants to be walking around in boxers that are scraping up your ding-dong. It's a perfect package for your package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WHISKEY at manscaped.com. I'm telling you, I've used it before. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for your tool. Get 20% off free shipping with that code WHISKEY at manscaped.com. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. If you use the promo code WHISKEY and you're a fan and you want to keep your nuts in good condition, your partner and your body and your balls and your right hand or left hand is going to thank you. Back to the episode. Yeah, I got to be a little careful on the, you know, praising the balconies thing because they not only are they taking them away in some places yeah, it sucks. or or they're locking up the the sliding glass door where yes. you can see that there was a balcony. Yep. You're looking at a balcony and you can't go out on it. I, it. That bothers me so much. Or or when the like when it's nice in a place and the windows don't open all the way, I, I, I it frustrates me so much because they're like I get that some guy maybe fucking killed himself one time and so now they won't open up all the way but I'm just like why, why? they won't let you crack a window in a lot no, of places now, now, now you can't even open them yeah, yeah. there's places that you can't you I'll know who, settle for a crack because I'll bring a you know a see, I like paper towel tube and blow it right out that way do you do that what, uh, when we were when we were in high school we called those titties we call those titties <laughs> where you stuffed a paper towel tube with I uh, just finally realized I should do that uh, it, when I was in San Francisco and the wind was so bad that when I tried to blow it out the window, it would just come right back in. <laughs> like a cartoon? So, yeah. So uh, my girlfriend got the genius idea to, you know, use the tube and uh, yeah. get it a little further away from the window so it can't get back in. <laughs> and it worked beautifully. So now I just have one in my bag. Uh, All the time. Yeah, because TSA doesn't, what are they going to do about a paper like, towel so tube? A paper towel tube. This is dang, this is a threat. This is a threat to the airline. Do you stuff it with this anything? This is like a tiny sword. Because <laughs> remember sword fights with the uh, yeah, long the cardboard tubes? Swords. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> Christmas wrapping tubes? Yeah. <laughs> Those were fucking Lightsabers so before lightsabers. That's exactly right. But you'd have to make up the noises yourself. Yeah, Kids you wouldn't even days. know what you were do dealing with. Do you stuff it with anything? You probably just mostly did the shing noise <laughs> like it's a sword. How about this? <laughs> That's great. That's and pretty good. So close to Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> Do you stuff your paper towel tubes with anything when you blow them out or no? No. You know the secret, right? Well, you can put like uh, dryer sheets. Dryer sheets. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I put dryer sheets in my shoes. But then you don't have to then you don't have to get the smoke outside. You just blow it into the dryer sheet. Yeah, you can end. just lay in bed and do that. It's like a flashlight that you blow into. Yeah, you fuck it afterwards. And it gets nice and yeah. Right. You blow hits in it and spit it in it. It gets really fuck fuckable it. when you put <laughs> weed and spit in it. Yeah, dude. That's what I look for. Yeah. In a vagina. A weed and spit vagina? I want the vagina to be high and wet. <laughs> <laughs> Does your girlfriend smoke pot? Or uh <laughs> <laughs> or like a pitch that might be uh, considered a uh, ball, uh, high and outside, inside, high, high and, out, and inside, high and inside. I would like be my vagina's high and inside, like a like a like a almost perfect pitch, high and inside. Mm -hmm. That's it. Does your girlfriend smoke pot with you? Oh, that's perfect for the pitcher. High and inside. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, still a ball. how's he going to – he's not going to – the batter can't catch that. Yeah, they can. Some people hit really good – high they is, can, High is dangerous for a good hitter. Because it's because the ball's pitched so hard to begin with that the ricochet gets them a home run almost in if you're and a guy of like, itself. If you're a guy like Aaron Judge, you love high high fastballs because you Because you a, just – You get out of bubble. You just, yeah, ooh. those are home run sucker balls. Holy yeah. shit. High is, high is bad for a pitcher. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know anything about baseball. You never, you don't like baseball. And Moneyball is one of my favorite movies ever. That's because you have a crush on Jonah Hill, and Brad Pitt, and and Philip Seymour Hoffman when he when he plays a guy who's angry all the time. And is there any women in I don't, it? I have no idea. Who yeah. plays the wife? Who I'm got not, stuck with that dumb part? <laughs> I don't know. The you're, wife. You're better at movies than I am. I don't. I like. I don't. I talked about you this morning to somebody. I said Doug knows. Doug can name. You can name people in films where. I forget they're in the movie. I'm not good at that. Like I'll go. Was oh, it Robin fuck. Wright? Robin Wright Penn, yeah. No, she wasn't. Was she? I don't know. Google it. He had some uh, wife in that movie that, or no, maybe he was. Who, yeah, who, yeah, Brad he Pitt? had a wife. Yeah. Billy Bean. Yeah, was he divorced at the time? I think he was divorced in that. But film. he was so he was sharing custody. That's why when he'd That's see right. his kid. That's right. He'd have to be like, yeah, everybody where I work hates me. Yeah, yeah, boohoo. I, I'm not really pulling this off. I just love that movie because there's so many fucking like, like just kind of sports guys like Philip Seymour Hoffman plays one, but then there's some older guys. Like he goes up a bunch of against a bunch of old men or older men yeah. who all have this like, why change what's worked for all this time That's kind baseball. of a mentality. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just so fun when he is in their face about it, but it takes so long for it to turn around and actually work what he's trying to do. But once it does, I, I just feel so much satisfaction. Right. Because it feels like like he like he went up against the bullies. He did. You know? Yeah, the Goliaths. The, the, <laughs> he the, did. The old, But fat, everybody in sports has to be a bully because you're, you're there to win. Yeah, you have to. You have but to bully everybody. But he just based it on everybody. analytics. He was really smart. He yeah. just beat a bully with numbers. And just, so does that still work? Is that still, is he still like a... Well, let's put, let's put it this way. Um a great phenomenal manager named Theo Epstein was who was the man who arguably changed Boston Red Sox history forever in terms of the way he organized baseball and he came to Chicago and won the World Series for the Chicago Cubs as well and his his style his managerial uh prowess was similar to what Billy did Billy he was just an he was an engineer of baseball numbers very very smart man so in the same regard yeah, it works, but you have to be a fucking genius. I mean, a fucking genius. Like these these are men that are like beyond baseball. They're extremely intellectual. They see things in a different way. You know, they viewed base baseball as code. So like it's almost like they broke the internet of baseball. Like they learned sure. how to crack the, they hacked baseball. But does it work forever? No, because sports continually change. That's the beauty. Right. Injuries. And and <laughs> and trades and the game changes. And there's cheaters, Houston. Cheater, cheater. Do you know about this? Yeah. They cheat. They cheated. Like they inevitably perfectly cheated. Which, by the way, I've always been cool with cheating in sports, but I am, I'm cool with it because I know it happens constantly. And just if you get caught, then we get mad. But if you don't get caught, it's I they're they're all cheating. Every football player is on steroids. Uh, every baseball player is trying to get their edge as well. Every basketball player is doing whatever they can to get the next physical edge, you know, and baseball cheats, not physical, but with numbers and math, they're stealing. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in international football, everybody cheats by faking injuries. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> Constantly faking injuries. So many ACL, <laughs> so many bruised knees, so many they're bruised always, legs. if they hit the ground for any reason, they start grabbing something and you writhing must. in pain. What sport do you watch? Uh, all of them. What's your favorite to watch? Well, I, like I said, I used to watch poker a lot. Yeah. Sports, sports. And I like, uh, I like the winter Olympics. Lo okay. I like right. pretty much everything in Speed the winter Olympics. Speed skating is going on. Any fucking thing on ice or snow. You yeah. Know, I'm into it. Do you do anything on ice or snow yourself or no? I have, but not, you know, I'm yeah. not good at it. I snowboard. I love, I love that. won't anymore. Like, I mean, sk ice skating is like, I don't know how. The fucking ankles. Nah, that's scary. The ankles me. can't. Would take you ski? It. Do you ever ski? I did. I, I I skied several times without without like proudly without ever taking a lesson or ever getting good at it. 
I was always a mess at it, but, you, I, would you but I was out there way? trying it. Not falling as much as just a lot of hesitation. Yeah. You know, a lot of pizza pie. And a lot, a lot of, of and if you did, and if I did fall, uh, you know, getting up was a ordeal. It's a pain. By the way, that's a thing that's, so I snowboard and I love, I love going to the mountains and we have family that lives in the mountains. So we go every year and that's a thing. Having a drink and smoking a joint when I was 23, fucking phenomenal. When I have a drink and smoke a little bit on the mountain now, impossible. And I mean it. <laughs> I, I'm fucking done. My my lungs can't do it. Like my energy is blown. Like the altitude kills me. So now I used to always ride with a little bit of something in my body because I loved it. I put in my headphones, I listen to music and I cruise down the mountain. And I've said this before, skiing or snowboarding, whatever you do on the mountain, it is, it is sex to me. It's the same like just complete physical satisfaction alone. You're alone in this world of pleasure. And I used to love having a little drink and a little hit. And now I just can't, I can't do it. It sucks. <laughs> I get scared. I get, I get scared. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to run out of energy. I'm going to pass out. I'm too tired. I can't breathe that well. It's too, the elevation's too high. It's just, it's, it's, it's intense. It's dude. I mean, and when we go to Breckenridge, uh, we sleep at almost 11,000 feet, 11,000 feet. That's most like big bear mountain is I think their peak is probably 11.7, maybe. So I sleep in Breckenridge at 11,000. You ski up to, uh, I think 13 is max there, I think, about 12.8 or something like that. So you're so when people are like, oh, I can handle it, I, I love seeing people go thinking they're tough guys and they get up there and they're winded as fuck. Half a run and they're just like, I, ca I can't do it. It's like, yeah, it'll, it, it's a testament to how in shape good uh, skiers have to be. You have to be f in such good shape to ride a ton Cause it's just such a, it's, it's a harbor on your body. The elevation kills, man. I wish I could do it like I used to, but I'll still go. That's why I do roller coasters. Yeah. You like that? Cause it's, that's, you know, pretty similar thrill, but you're like, you know, you just sit there and you yeah. <laughs> have minimal, you know, you have certain safety instructions, but other than that, you know, you're really, free. You don't really have to do anything. Where did you go to six but flags? I do like the, I do like the rush of, uh, the moving drop. quickly oh, and, and dropping. Yeah. Do you go to six flags? I have yes, I, I you know I, now it's more daunting now because uh, I, I've grown to like Disneyland more because it's all flat surfaces at Disneyland. Yeah, Magic Mountain is on a fucking mountain. Yeah, it's on and the mountain. like if you're like I, if you just have a, on a whim want to go on a certain ride, you you're you've got a hike ahead of you. Yeah, it's hard. It, it's really like it's impossible to to only walk downhill there. <laughs> right, unless you're leaving. Yeah, once you're going to leave. But you know what I mean? You can't go on rides and get out of there without having to walk up some hills, which I'm happy to do. But it's just like, you know, at a certain point, it's like, well, I don't really like the ninja ride that much anyway. So I'm not going to schlep all, <laughs> not gonna schlep all the gotta, way up I'm not going to schlep the ninja ride. That's yeah. a nightmare. It's like, you know, it's like I've grown to the point where, like, I love San Francisco, but I've gone there enough to know how to walk around without walking up hills. Yeah. yeah. yeah just stay <laughs> there's in ways there's to no go. Yeah. There's, <laughs> you, you, it's amazing how you only have to go out of your way a couple of blocks to avoid a hill. Well, you learn. You're like, I'm not going over there. Fuck that. <laughs> Getting over there, I'm going to take a car because I can't walk. Yeah. Uh, do you, what's the thing, what that, when you said Disney, what's the thing that, what's the thing you still do as an adult that m makes you still feel like a child that you do that you're like, this is still my thing that I'm like, oh, this is still childish, quote unquote, but it's still ma I still love it. It's funny that you say that because it's it's everything that, I, it's a lot of things that I love to do, but also things that I don't like. When I do them, I feel like a, a kid again. Uh, yeah. Uh, all the time. Like what? Like just like finding an address or, you <laughs> know- <laughs> Paying a bill on time, or <laughs> you know, um, like oh, you know, like renting a car, taking it out, driving it around, returning it you? without without anything, you know, without breaking anything. Yeah, like bringing it back feels like I feel like a, a kid again. Like I, you know, when you when they get out, when you get out of the car and they walk around it, like looking for something <laughs> yeah. again, like anxious, like yeah. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> It's a fucking <laughs> rental car. Even if there is a scratch on it, why would any? Yeah. There's already a million. You should be able on. to get away with it, you know. Right. But yeah, uh, you know, uh, certainly like smoking in hotel rooms. I'm like very childlike in that I really don't want to get caught doing it, even though in my life 
you know, being white and having some money, the worst is going to happen is, you know, it's Someone a, a dumb charge. You're getting yeah. yelled at. Some, I, I've been thrown out once or twice of hotels. And really? That, that's unsettling. Do you got like a good hotel just, throw out story? Just like get out. What's your what's your what's your <laughs> what's the one that you got thrown out of? What that stuck with you the most? Uh, one where like I almost feel like I'd recognize the guy if I saw him. You yeah. know, after you know seeing so many faces in my life, but I'd just be like, that's that guy. Was just a guy, just a you know. I was just smoking in a room where what city? I had the window open, San Diego. Nice. Had the window open, could blow it out the window. Mm-hmm. Very big window opening. Mm-hmm. So I just got lazy or something, or you know, even when you try your hardest to to make the smell go away, it's some, sometimes it just it just gets out into the yeah. hallway. Life. You know, I put the towel down. And the High school I door love crack, but yeah. sometimes the door crack is every cor- you know every side of the door. Yeah. Doesn't has air, but yeah, it, no insulation. Where you can in see the hallway, like that's where that's when you test the hotel room door is, uh, you know, at night when the you know the light shines. Well, you can see all the light from the hallway yeah, coming through. Dude, I like, oh that. shit! Well, that's that's going to be hard to keep the smoke from not going yeah. through all of those cracks. But anyway, uh, I did the best that I could, or you know, maybe maybe failed. But the guy was really this was years ago, so the guy was like, uh, "You can't do that here." And I'm like, "Do what?" And he goes, "Smoke in your room." And I go, I'm not, I'm not smoking in here. And he goes, oh, I could smell it. You're definitely smoking here. And I go, well, I'm, I'm taking my medicine. I'm a California because at that time it was, was still- legal if you had your card. Right. I'm like a California medical patient. And he goes, and this is where it gets into the argument. Just goes in circles because he was like, well, uh, you, you're not allowed to smoke anything in the room, so we're going to charge you two hundred fifty dollars. And I was like, well, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll stop. And he's like, but you also have to leave the room. And I was like, yeah, but what, how about if I just pay the 250 and I don't smoke anymore? Right. And he goes, well, what you're doing is illegal. And I go, no, I have my card. And he goes, let me see it. So I get my medical card and I show it to him. And he stares at it for the longest time. As if he fucking knows. As if, it, as if it's going to matter because he hands it back to me and goes, well, you still can't smoke in the room. And I go, okay, well, I'll stop. And he goes, well, you have to leave. And I go, why do I have to leave if I'm going to stop smoking? And he goes, because you smoked in the room. You're not allowed to smoke in the room. So they threw me out and charged me. Like, I think it should be one or the other. Fact. <laughs> yeah, you can't do both you know? to me. So I've done, you know, routines, uh, you know, to that effect. That reminds me, uh, I saw you doing a time at the comedy store recently, yeah. and I wanted to tell you that. I mean, uh, obviously, it's a premise that we as near and dear to both of us, but we don't both talk about how uh, LAX. The TSA will let you take up to an ounce. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I talk about it mostly like my position on it on stage is just telling people this is real. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not making it because, because no matter how much you tell people, they still, there's a part of their brain that goes, I'm going to be the person they decide to make an example of and bust me for trying to walk through a pot. The and, LA Times wrote about it. We we've I, we both talked about it. I know. I've I've constantly tried to spin it into. Well, I, I tell a story, or I used to tell that joke where I would tell a story in regards to when I got caught by TSA when it was just medical, and I was pulled out of line, and this guy made a huge deal out of it. I mean, it it, it no joke. I almost missed my flight, and this was back when I had my card or the paper or whatever, mm-hmm. and he was ber- I mean berating me. I mean, he right? Because he he went rogue. That's yes. not. They clearly were not told to do that. Exactly. This and this was and this also maybe was seven eight years ago before it was totally completely legal. Yeah. Here, but but even then, I used to fly all the time. Yeah, with me it. too. Me too. And I never got hassled. Yeah. And he was so adamant. I mean, like he wanted to. He wanted as if he wanted to catch me. You know when a cop pulls someone. Uh, here you go. You know when a cop pulls <laughs> over a black guy and he's yeah. like. Wants to find Yeah, got to find the thing that he's yeah, done. because he hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. You're just prying to find something. Oh, well, you know, you can't have this on your car, whatever. It, it was like he was prying. It was like using his his power to pry at me to try to find something. And I was like, Dude, I, you know, by the way, it was also, uh, if I remember right, it was it was uh, two, pre, two pre-roll joints. That's all it was. Two pre-roll joints. And he was trying to say this is a federal offense and i said well yeah you know i mean what what like what can we do here to like just abort this situation i need to get on my flight you can throw them away 
whatever you need yeah, to do. That's the go-to. And he continued until until finally he got a. I said, well, then I'd like a supervisor to you know if I'm going to get charged for something, I'd like to have another supervisor in the room. You know, which I don't know where that came from inside of me. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like I became yeah. a lawyer, and then and a supervisor came in. We all spoke. He he really changed his fucking tone, of course, because the supervisor was so much nicer of a dude. Sure. And was like, you know, what's the problem? I explained everything to him, and he's like, okay, well. Um, we're not going to let you travel with this today. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Whether or not it was legal to have me travel with it because I had my medical paperwork. Um, he, he confiscated it, quote unquote, threw them away. And he let me go to my gate. But this guy, it's as if like, 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 like he, he had a, a grudge against me and mm -hmm. was just wanted to fuck me over so bad. And so years later now, when I talk about it, I'm like, now... I would love to see that fucking guy. Yeah. Say, I would love to see just that guy. Just every day, he's just fuming. <laughs> yes, yeah, like so finding weed in everybody's like Louis bag. Louis Black all day long, what the wagging fuck? his what finger at people. And, Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so, like just so angry that people have freedom. You can get away with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I tr but you're right. We both, talk, I, I talk about that because people think I'm lying. My, my cousins came to town and they thought I was, I was like, dude, would I set you up to get in trouble ever? You're my family. You can leave with the pot. Yeah. Like I was like, it's that's it's please know that it's fine. People still get nervous and they hide it, which is the one thing the TSA say, says, don't hide it. Because if you're if you're trying to put it in a shampoo bottle or do then right. they're gonna find then it. Then they then they're like, what's in this shampoo bottle? <laughs> right. It's probably that shampoo that a shampoo bomber would use. <laughs> right. exactly, exactly. You know, which is also a thing that like the shoes and the bottles of liquids, like no one, uh, people tried to b bomb planes that way and yeah. failed. Failed miserably. And it's still something all these years later that we're still where do you doing. Put, where do you, do you put your pot in your pocket when you travel or put it in your bag? No, I don't have anything in my pockets because when you have to go through the machine where you put your hands over your head, sure. uh, the, you know, it sees everything. So I put it in the dish. I usually travel with pre-rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, cause I like joints, but that's the one, the one thing that we, I was going to say to you. Sure. It's all I love is joints. It's my favorite. <laughs> I, I, I love it so much. It's always social and it's the perfect amount. If for I'm you. by myself, I love it. Yeah. I put it in the same bin with my cell phone uh -huh. and my wallet and keys and bullshit. Yeah, Every well, time. Well, I mean, cause you get from like Lowell or something. So yep. it looks like a pack of cigarettes. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's super, that's my, super that's smart. Fastest way to be like, it's right there. There's nothing to dig for it. All my shit's in the bowl. It goes through the thing and I'm good to go. And I've said that to people a million times. I said, if you have something like that, pre-rolled, put it in the fucking bowl. They will th that that is easier for them in case there's any sort of metal parts in your whatever fucking contraption you're carrying the weed in and put it through and you're good to go. But the, you know, just loosen their carry-on or just anywhere That's in their, fine too, anywhere yeah. in their check bag. It all doesn't matter. Yeah. Check bag, the only thing I'd worry about is a, you know, maybe a baggage handler would take it, but even there I think they're being watched all the time now. 100%. You know, so yeah. I think that even there that that's not going to happen. No. So I I feel like I feel like you're good to go uh even any any way that you do it right you know because they just don't they don't have the time the resources or the care why would they care to stop people from just taking their weed to their next location right, right now i think about that what that's the question i ask myself why would they care is the most logical what would they be well sometimes i feel like my bag smells so bad yeah. that like <laughs> i could get like a family like a parent being upset that their kid has to smell it or whatever. Okay. Or, you know, an older person not just finding the smell bad because they've their whole life they've been a racist. <laughs> <laughs> so that smells like black people. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's um uh I generally don't feel too much uh, guilt about doing it yeah. and get away with it all the time. But people really I see it in their faces, like at the comedy store in the main room. The the you can see everybody's face when you're talking to them. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not just a spotlight on you. So like you can really look at people, yeah. and I tell them, you know, because I'll say, "Who's visiting from out of town?" You know, fly home with weed. Yeah. Do it. Do just it. do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you, telling you, you, you you're going to be able to do it. I know you should. And, uh, and there's people just shaking their heads like I, they just can't imagine it. Because it's just such a terrifying well, idea it's, it's to do been, something that you know is not legal. It's been indoctrinated into most, if not all, Americans' heads that you're not. It's a bad. It is still a no-no thing. It'll still for a long time, dude. That's going to be a no-no thing until 
until a generation dies out where it will be a thing of the past, like until the idea that like my kids' kids won't know what a, won't have any really connectivity to like a cassette tape. Right. That will be the same kind of like knowledge of when the generation dies that we're, we, look, dude, my grandmother is quite sick and I called her the other day to say hello to her and I check in with her probably every week and, um, you know, the fucking doctors are, are debating on pain medication and I, and, and I, and she's, you know, she's in her late 80s. So it's like, it, her generation was like, that's, it's, they've been told it was wrong for so long, whether or not they even feel that way. Yeah. It's like ingrained in her brain. And that the smell is bad. Right. Everything about it is negative. It, it's, it, it's, you know, compared to skunks. Right, 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 right. Which yeah. always <laughs> smells a million times worse. <laughs> I know. I've never, I've never, <laughs> No one's ever, no one's ever hit a fucking weed truck, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, does that smell like?" I said, this idea that it's like this negative, awful thing has, or been- that they can get high from it, like the right. second hand high thing is ridiculous. So I told her, I said <laughs> on the phone, I go, "There, there is medicine now. That's THCA. That's not, there's non-active stuff. There's all sorts of stuff." And I think for the first time in my grandmother's life, she even maybe considered it that she was finally like, Hey, maybe, because I was saying like, it's, it's just got to become a standard for a generation, uh, like that to just go, Hey, if you try this, just try this without all this negative connotation and you don't like it, that's fine. But the knowledge that like people are kind of thinking about indulging in it in that era makes me happy that I'm like, yeah, at least some people are going, maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, lots of kids are telling their parents, their aged parents, Yeah, uh, you know, just try it. Yeah, try it. Worst case scenario, you'll be upset that you tried it for a little while. And you don't like it. You might throw up or something, but that'd be, that's pretty wild. Pretty rare, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, chances are you're going to like it, and it changes their whole view on the thing, because they, yeah, they're like, this is a pleasant feeling. Why would I be afraid or worried about anyone else who's feeling this this feeling? Right. Well, and especially as a painkiller. Yeah, that, I mean, that's my it's thing. It's just is invaluable. The, the physical value is tremendous compared to... I have family members that have gone through chemo and it's just like the, you just, you hear how much stuff they get pumped and you're like, God, how could we not just break this fucking fake ghost wall of this is bad? It's so strange. The government's so good at convincing people opioids were chill. <laughs> like the most deadly drug on earth. They convinced people. They're like, this is fine. It's not that big of a deal. We give this out all the time. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't make it good because you give it out all the fucking time. And why were they so divisive? They were so good at making marijuana so negative. It, they were so good at it. The marketing was so good. Dare was so strong that like well, marijuana- we st- We're still white people saying marijuana. Yeah, that's like, right. Like that's the word that was yeah. thrown around to try to make it sound scary. Because it was supposed to be Mexican. Right, you Mexico. Know? Yeah, it's exactly I always right. forget to say cannabis because that's probably better. But, Way better. Uh, right, I learned that I recently. forget to do it though. Well, I, because <laughs> I do like the name marijuana. I'm just used to it. And I've like, you know, branded it, you know, like I was in a show called The Marijuana Logs. And, yeah. You know, like- but, it, but you know, I learned this too, that the government did that to associate it with Mexican- uh, yeah, marijuana. Marijuana. Oh, the scary, scary Mexican drug. weed. Yeah, the drug that made you lose your mind. Yeah, make yeah. you rape innocent white girls. Rape went innocent white girls, which is the name of your next album. You guys pick up Doug Benson's Wait a Rape second. Innocent White Girls. I didn't want to announce that yet. <laughs> That's still... Uh, but yeah, I'll go through TSA now and uh, numerous times, and often I'll be traveling with somebody else who gets to enjoy the spectacle of like they'll pull my bag aside for some random thing. Sure. And then when they're searching through my bag for some weird electronics item that they don't, you know, they're not sure what it is. They just like, you know, either look at and put back or set down next to it, like a, you know, eighth of weed in a right. little jar and a, a dirty pipe, like a pipe that's clearly been smoked out of before. <laughs> you know, I, I don't go with a packed pipe, but right. you know, like, and, uh, and just all this shit that says marijuana has pot on it, pot leaves, you know, right. edibles, bath bombs that have weed in them. Oh, that's you cool. Know, 
But all that stuff's in there, and they just brush all that aside to find like, oh, it's just your electric toothbrush or whatever right, that's right. making them worried. You can't have this. You, you know, it happens all the time. Nobody right. says shit about it. No, it's true. It's also we're two white privileged guys talking about it, so I'm sure there's people. Well, that that's are- the other thing. You <laughs> know? know, that's I the know, trouble dude. is you say yeah. to somebody of color, "Hey, try this. It's easy." And they're like, and "Then they Fuck got some you. fucking racist asshole working the TSA that day." Yeah, that's the problem. But generally, I'm you know I'm finding the TSA to be you know more and more pleasant all the time i still yeah. think that it's kind of a uh, it's, it's weird that like one day you're just barked at constantly about what to do and other tsa agents are just quiet and just let you go about your business and, and they're nice figure it out yeah. you know but you know what i mean they have different styles and yeah. it's just interesting that there isn't like a style book like you know let's either do this quietly or let's bark at everybody but <laughs> but why are some employees choosing to do one and some the other and right. they're doing the same job so I'm just and they do it so aggressive. it's so differently. Yeah, or that's know? it. I'm gonna do the spe- the spreadsheet, the Google Doc spreadsheet. It's gonna be hotels with tubs <laughs> and TVs and balconies and TSA agents. We like Mark in Seattle is dope. Ke- well, Kevin. Seattle's good. Yeah, Portland. I think they're kind of like they're kind of one of their slogans is how nice they're. Uh, TSA is there. <laughs> is that the, that's on their license plate? <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> I, I mean, I think they're really proud of it. Like, I think they Oregon our TSA voted is that very by chill. Travel Magazine or something. And uh, yeah, there's def there's so many like some of my uh, buddies that I've traveled with over the years. Like, we just get we could just talk for hours about. Uh, you know, accommodations. It's, and, but, that, but that's like the whole, that's like half of our whole the life. Different airlines and all that shit. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing is like, I'll see uh, non comedians like jump in all the time and uh, give us a hard time for like, yeah, we get it. You're in airports all the time and all the airlines suck. But we are. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So that's, that's our lives. That's why airplane so they jokes have to, became they have hacky to read about it because every comic was like, this is the most relatable thing on earth for us and for audience members because. We live this world. There's yeah. no other. There is no other time in your life where you are gathered with complete literal strangers, forced to be together like that for yeah. that long of a time, right? Public transportation, like planes and I mean, I'm sorry, like uh, trains and buses, extremely short stints of time you're with strangers, right? Extremely short. Tend to be, or everybody's asleep, right? So for this, <laughs> that's why it's so fucking rare. You're never sitting next to that many strangers for so long. That's why you. It's so easily. Uh, 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 talked about for comics because you're like this is my whole life is ha- half of my fucking travel is on a fucking yeah airplane. and the seat doesn't really go but you know it really doesn't recline not anymore and no. the food is terrible the and the, dog shit you know and the the flight attendants treat you terribly and, why are they so mean you know it, yeah. all that there were so so many bits over the years that yeah I got indoctrinated into like this cult of comedians who feel like talking about it is. Uh, you know, hacky or bad. And then Twitter came along and okay, maybe you're not doing it on stage, but you're still bitching about your online yeah. situation on <laughs> yeah, Twitter. Everybody you're does. still doing the, you're still doing jokes about how shitty it is to fly sometimes. Yeah. You know? Cause you have to, cause it's like part of the fuck. I don't know who said it to me. A comic said one time they go, uh, 80% of com- an older comic when I was an open micer said 80% of comedy is getting to do, com- is going to do comedy. And I was like, oh, as I've gotten older, I've learned that like that is so true. Most of my comedy experience is go getting to go do comedy. You know, 20% performance, 80% is like getting to the right places to do the right things, to go to the right place, to get to the taking of the thing and the thing. It's like, that's, it's, it's, it's a nightmare, but I love it. And, uh, we'll never change. We'll do this forever for you guys. Doug is traveling right now. Come see him live. He's out on the road right now. He's performing. He's going to be in Alaska tonight, tomorrow. No, I'm kidding. You're yeah, not in Alaska. You're really, you're really going into that. I pitched it. Yeah, you're I pitched really, that bit. <laughs> that was like a real, real host of a real show. <laughs> yeah, I did. Where yeah. are you? Are you on tour right now? Where they really, you know, ask your publicist 15 times for what they go. You where know, is he going? What do you want to say? What's the name of his tour? Yeah, and then when you get there, they go. So what should we say? What should we say about this? <laughs> as soon as, yeah. as soon as You're like, why did they, I send the fucking email? Why over it was then? all back and forth so much about that? Um, I was going to ask you, do you have a favorite club in the United States? Yes. Which one? It's hard because I, because, because name a top club. Well, my favorite. You don't have to name an absolute favorite. I hate that sort of thing, too. Yeah. People I, always ask me, what's your favorite movie? Oh, you think somebody who loves movies can just pick one 
stupid fucking right. movie and that and for that, you it's that fast. is my everything but it is fast and i furious love too. movies with an s it's fast and furious too for you well you know i know you, you get my tokyo drift i know <laughs> 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 uh, Denver Comedy Works is, is I bragged three, about right? I bragged about it for a long time. Oh, Con- Comedy Works, great downtown See, Larimer that's Square. That's all I was fishing for. I will be there on April twentieth doing stand up comedy on four twenty four twenty twenty four twenty twenty. Oh big shit! One. Oh shit! It's a big one. So I had to be in Denver. Are you doing just one show or two? What are you doing? Uh, is it one show at seven o'clock seven on o'clock. on four twenty? But you know. Of course, room to add. Uh, you know, we'll do a late show if, uh, if guys need buy the be. fucking tickets so we can do a second show. And I say we because I'm going to jump on the show. Okay, I'm coming out there. Four twenty is a Monday this year. So oh, it that's, is. Uh, that always is a little bit of a, a monkey wrench. I don't think it matters in a city like Denver, my friend. That's why I'm going to yeah, Denver. Yeah, I think they'll come out for yeah, that. Yeah, but you still you still have to deal with the the business. Uh, the the comedy club itself is like mm-hmm. it's Monday night. We don't do we can't do two shows on a Monday night. So I'm giving them the old well, we'll see. You know, hoping my first show will sell out. Yeah, if it's good, if it's you know, if it's good post business. haste. So my point is that Both those, get even those tickets. if you don't live in Denver, please buy Fly some there. tickets. <laughs> Don't even, don't don't even come to the show. It's I just fine. need I just need the seven o'clock to sell out so okay. we can add a nine forty five or some shit. Uh, go buy these tickets. Go to Denver Comedy Works. Go to DougBenson.com. Doug Benson Comedy. What is it? DougBenson.com. I think you're better at sitting up in your your chair than you're doing than, a great than job. Your guests are in this one. What do you mean you're doing a great job? Is this like like Letterman used to always have his seat a little bit higher than the guest? Do you pull that kind of shit? No, I'm yours, doing the opposite. Does yours have slightly better posture? No, that is that's Letterman. <laughs> that's Letterman's ego. I don't. I don't. That's that's Letterman <laughs> wanting to be a little bit above you. But this is me. Look at I'm lower than you right now. You th- well, because I just sat up straight finally. Yeah, but I have after but, an hour of talking and in sl- and slump mode. Drinking. But I love this is why I, l- I bought these chairs. I wanted to be chill and relaxed and low key. What is your hot? What is I your love shirt? it. I love the cr- being able to cross your leg and see. How What's your people, shirt mean? Have people staring right into it? House of what? My shirt is House of Nan King, a delicious. Oh, in restaurant San Francisco. San Francisco. Fucking a, dude. Always That's another, gr- by the way, another good group of clubs, Cobbs and Punchline, mm-hmm. phenomenal clubs. Oh, yeah. I'll be uh, at, in San Francisco the night before 420. So 419. 419, doing a show at 1030. 1030. See, this is where San Francisco is different. <laughs> They're letting me do a show at 1030, where at midnight, it'll officially be 420. Oh, cool. And then we go outside in that beautiful outdoor area, and everyone gets high as fuck. You're saying outdoor of Cobbs or... Uh, the punchline. The punchline, yeah. On the, the recently on that, on saved that, punchline. On the patio there, yes, yes. They have this whole beautiful outdoor it garden is, area. Yeah. Uh, it's been great for me for years. Again, before legalization, you know, before, uh, you, you you know, uh, for uh, health reasons and then before recreation. Before fun. San Francisco has always been uh, a, super, super a phenomenal down. phenomenal city. Super down with it. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to be there on uh, 419 at the punchline. And it's douglovesmovies.com. Douglovesmovies.com. Mm-hmm. And I just started uh, Doug Loves Movies' Twitter account, finally. Oh, shit. Only been doing that podcast for 14 years. It's about time. Yeah, just uh, coming around to it. I mean, longer than Twitter, I guess. Yeah, Twitter's only been on for probably a decade, 12, right? 11 years, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh... Anyway, um, Doug Loves Movies on uh, Twitter, if you follow me there, you, that'll be all the Doug Loves Movies news Cool. And my regular Doug Benson feed can just be about stand up and telling jokes. I like that. That's good that you're making a separation. Do you have a whiskey ginger Twitter account? No, you know, we have an Instagram, which I like the most because it's, you know what it is for yeah, me? Yeah, I got an Instagram too for Doug Loves Movies. Doug Loves Movies Instagram. Mm-hmm. If the, the reason I have an Instagram for this and not a Twitter is because I have a collection of these artists, this phenomenal group of people named the Comedy Content Collective. They're, they're a group of artists across the world, actually. And, uh, they kind of do art for different podcasts and comedy shows that they like. And um, I like to just host their stuff on there. I have two people that work with me, uh, this guy, Joseph Free and Jenna Sunday, who like put up phenomenal shit from great artists. And I just want to like help feature their work is kind of what it's for. That's so it's cool. like promotional for the show, but also like, hey, this is some cool shit that they make that people make so people can find more artists because it's it's like, it's crazy. Like, what I don't know six seven eight years ago it was hard to get a good like tape of yourself or a good art of yourself or great photos of like your what you're doing and now there's so many fucking phenomenal artists you just need access to them and I think 
we're just trying to show great artists making dope shit so more people can go, fuck, I want to follow that person or maybe work with them or whatever. Because I feel like that's the only per that's the purpose of Instagram anyway, is to like make a collection of cool, cool things to get people to see other cool shit. Yeah. I, I, I love, I, 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 you know, uh, uh, my friend Patton Oswalt has been, uh, on it for years and years and years, but I, I recently got into, uh, just having, uh, artists do show posters. Fuck yeah. You know, I mean, he's been doing it forever and all the best ones, you know, they all flock to him because, because he's, you know, great and, you know, supports that stuff. Totally. And, uh, but I've been, uh, getting into it a little bit recently and, uh, uh, I really love it. The, that's what that one is down there. That red rocket tour. That's, that's by them. Oh, cool. But the tricky part is like when somebody like, don't you hate a lot of, uh, art of your own face? Oh, I don't want my face on it. No, no. I, well, you I, know what I mean? Like, yeah, sometimes they do. And it's like, like people, yeah. they're so nice, but sometimes, like, doesn't it suck when. Because uh, you don't like your face. When it's, uh, or it is a bad rendering. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but that's the thing. Yes. It's hard yeah, to yeah, be yeah, yeah. Uh, objective, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, you don't want to be like, fuck you. That's not what I look like. I'm not that ugly. But also. Right. But yeah, you do feel that way sometimes. You're like, that's not me. I'm not that fucking. Or why'd you use that photo of me as the basis that's more for it. that? Why'd drawing? you use that photo is what I. That's, yeah, they pick yeah. a bad photo and then go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like they make it worse. Yeah, they're like, know? I'm really killing it. You're like, well, I guess. Yeah, that, uh, that's been my MO. I'm trying these posters. And then that, uh, that right there, uh, that bear, that, that, uh, that was in the background of my special. It's a, it's a, um, the Chicago Bears. That's the Cubs, the Blackhawks, and the White Sox, and the Bulls are all represented. Oh. In, and, and can you name that artist by chance? Do you know who that is? That's uh, someone that you may have recognized his work for years and years and years and years and years. Really? Who is it? He's very big in the comedy community and designed so many posters that you were probably on, Whoa. whether or not you recognize it who or not. Who is it? Uh, I'll give you one more hint. Uh, Meltdown. There was a guy that did all the posters at Meltdown. There was a guy that did all the posters at Meltdown. I mean, I love those posters, but I never knew who did them. You don't really? What's his name? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what a fun way to end a podcast. <laughs> 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 the way you threw that was so fun. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting that you're not going to tell me who that is. Because I really could walk away without you telling me and not mind it. Well, you wouldn't care. Yeah. 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 But it's still f it's fun for the viewers and listeners. For them to know? That, well, they're not going to see this art. That's the problem. No, no. I mean, it it's up. fun for them to like not not get the information. <laughs> Because also you could just, we, yeah. they don't know whether you're going to tell me or not afterward. Yeah, done. that's the best. That's my favorite part. You know, they, as far as they know, you're going to just tell me anyway, but. Maybe. But I'd like to not. walk out of here without knowing. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but whoever it was did great work. Yeah. Like a poster for every Meltdown show. Like there, there was one a week for years. That's exactly right. And now Kumail is uh, mm. a movie star. He's a movie star. And you have the same, and by the way. I know he put up that shirtless pic, Kumail, of him all ripped. Yeah. Why didn't you put up yours? Well, because you've been a competitive I bodybuilder am not for years. A show off like him. <laughs> you, but you I'm do have in, that same body. You I'm just don't want to do it. Sad marriage where they're constantly producing award-winning content. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker. That like, motherfucker. How could you go a year mm -hmm. without a tweet? Oh, my goddamn arms are killing me from all this weightlifting. Like, he w kept his workout regimen. Yeah, Marvel paid and him a lot of And his lack of eating. I'm yeah. sure they did. To just But be he quiet. kept it all a secret. Got to do it. That's crazy, though. Because we're also in a world where people have to walk you through every fucking step of everything they do. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a lot of people would have started immediately with the Instagrams about, I'm going to get in shape. Transforming. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't. He went all nah. the way to fucking Be quiet crazy. and do the work. That's what he did. He just was quiet and did the work. And you know what? Like, it looks great by, I guess, people's standards. Sure. But I don't like the veininess of yeah. the yeah. overly. You're I don't like that it looks like his arm's going to explode. I think, yeah, you're also not the market that they're targeting. No, I know. <laughs> so That's I the get, thing. It's yeah. not for or about me not at for all. Me. Yeah, yeah. But still, I have, a, I still have criticisms. 
<laughs> and yet still, it's I like, shall criticize. You know, like I'll criticize the movie Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants when I have no business saying a word about it. What What's bad about it? I don't think there's one thing bad about it's it. It's terrible. Yeah, it is not a good movie. You're but right. it's also not for me. It doesn't matter so at all. why does my opinion matter? No, it doesn't. Those but, pants are going to travel no matter what I say. <laughs> Uh, okay. But seriously, those girls are all different sizes. Girls, why would it, really why would it fit all of yeah, them? Yeah, that's impossible. I'm not, I'm not trying to fat shame anybody. Well, they're not all 28 ways. But they're all this, not the same. No, they're all not the same. And they all wear them beautifully. Uh, yeah, they do. Those traveling pants. They're magical. They forgot a word in the title. It's already a long ass title. Go ahead and add magical. The sisterhood of the magic, magical, magical traveling, traveling pants. Traveling pants. <laughs> Traveling magical pants. The traveling magical pants. The sister of the traveling ma- the traveling magical pants. <laughs> yeah, because it's not necessarily the traveling that's the magical part. It's the pants. They travel and their magic. And their magic and they travel and their pants. Uh guys, this has been phenomenal, Mr. Doug Benson. Thank Put you so much drink for coming. Down hard, like yeah, a real that's what you drinker. should do. Like well, what you said, like the little baby guy. I almost guy. did it on this thing, but I think it would break. It might. Yeah, these are very delicate. And they mean a lot to me. Delicate coasters. That's where I got them from. Delicatecoasters.com is where you can get these. Um, do yourself a favor. Go see Doug live. He's phenomenal. He's a lovely, sweet person. I'll put all that stuff in the description below. That's where we always do it. And how we end the episode is I'm going to walk away. You're going to look into the camera mm-hmm. as I walk off. And you're going to end the episode with a word or a phrase of your choosing. One word or a phrase. Nothing long, nothing heavy, just something concise that represents Doug Benson. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Pizza. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey.